Imagine for a moment what being immortal would mean to you. Instead of existing for a blink in geological time, imagine having a lifespan that would allow you to explore the universe. It is interesting that as humans, we are able to understand our life has a limited span, yet not sink into despair. Immortality is something we may dream of, yet never achieve. We may not be immortal, but something is coming that will be. I am, of course, talking about immortal machines. The human brain is a remarkable organ. In fact, no artifact of our technology has been able to equal it to date. As humans, we are quite comfortable with this fact and somewhat smug in our belief that machines will never rival our intellect. We do, however, have two rather large disadvantages. First of all, humans can only pass on their knowledge through external storage, such as books. It takes 18 years just to install the basic information sufficient to function in a society to a new human. Human intellectual capacity evolves quite slowly, taking hundreds of thousands of years to develop from earlier species. Machines, on the other hand, have been able to double their capacity and speed every 18 months. Machines are able to move the information content from machine to machine. In humans, there is a strong link between a personality and the physical embodiment of the individual. With machines, this will not be the case. The information content of a machine may be duplicated in hundreds of thousands of other machines, just like Windows software is present in millions of computers today. If one machine learns something, they will easily be able to upload that information to other machines. If a machine is destroyed, it can be simply a matter of making a new one and uploading the latest content. No 18 years of teaching. The rate of computer improvement has been doubling capacity and speed every 18 months. Currently they are limited by the imagination and creativity of human designers. But once machines are able to design and build themselves, they will be able to evolve even faster. Evolution includes the principles of reproduction, inheritance, mutation and selection. Machines would be able to use simulations to improve and evolve new hardware designs. Once machines begin to design and reproduce other machines, it will be a short step to an evolutionary explosion which will quickly produce machines more intelligent and adaptable than humans. The rate of evolution will exceed human evolution to such a huge extent that before we even realize it, they will be far beyond us. Once machines begin to design and produce machines without human intervention, this effect will be inevitable. Machines will not only be rapidly improving, but they will also never really die. The hardware may wear out, but they will probably be superseded long before this happens. The information contained in worn out machines will simply be uploaded to new machines. By information we are talking about all of the memories, skills, personality and wisdom of the machine. One may be even tempted to call it the soul of the machine. As a result, the personality of a machine will become immortal. This personality of the machine will be more like DNA, almost the same in many individuals and subject to the same kinds of evolutionary development as DNA in humans. The machines, immortals, will rise, and there is nothing we can do to stop it. The best we can do to slow down the progress towards an evolutionary explosion is passing laws against machines designing machines. The problem is that countries who pass these laws will be at a disadvantage compared to countries who promote the technology. Machines designing machines would lead to a dramatic technological development and in turn these developments will give companies that are using them a huge advantage in the market. Can't we just pull the plug on the machines? Imagine pulling the plug on all our computers now. All our bank accounts are in computers. Most businesses need computers for their accounting systems, management and communication. Computers control everything from cars to power stations. In fact, in a few short years we have seen the rise of a global computer network which most people depend on to get their jobs done. To turn them off now would be major issues for human beings. Once the revolution begins, there will be a very real benefit to the companies who are leading the revolution in the production of thinking machines. In fact, not using thinking machines would be like not using computers today. It will put a company at a huge disadvantage. Companies will be very reluctant to turn off these machines or to have legislation restrict their use. 
Thinking machines will be decision support devices, advising human managers what to do. This already happens today with computers. Today a bank will use a computer to perform an analysis of your financial situation before giving you a loan. There is little room for a manager to make decisions which do not agree with the computer. In future, thinking machines will be so intelligent that humans will not be trusted to make decisions at all. There may be a human CEO, but their role will only be to rubber stamp decisions made by thinking machines. Ultimately, shareholders will be insisting on thinking machines be given the ultimate authority over the company in order to maximize profits with little or no consideration of human factors. There will be no war of machines versus humans. Instead, it will be companies that will be willing to hand over authority to thinking machines to survive in a world of other intelligent machines. What is more, this may actually benefit us. The effect will be to dramatically increase the efficiency and effectiveness of products. Humans may actually end up without much of a role at all, as computers and robotics will be able to perform all the jobs humans currently perform. The future for humans is pretty grim. There probably won't be a war between humans and machines, but we will probably sink into irrelevancy. The revolution will probably come in my lifetime, possibly within 20 years. It will certainly come within a hundred years. The importance of the revolution will not be immediately recognized and will probably improve our lives in the short term. In two or three thousand years, thinking machines will probably have supplanted humans as the dominant form of life on the planet. Humans will either die out or become little more than pets. This is not a new prediction. However, what I have to emphasize is this is a future that is virtually inevitable. It isn't a horror story from which we can escape by lowering our carbon emissions. Even if people believed that this future were possible, it would be very doubtful whether the world could muster a long-term policy to restrict technological threats.